Ah, yes, the struggle is real, and I'm talking about screen time, and those of you that are parents out there, when I say the struggle is real, you, you can understand exactly what I'm talking about. I have two children of my own, and it's time for a, a refresh when it comes to screen time. We have some great advice coming up with Natalie Sermopoulos. She is a parent and family expert with Evolving with Natalie. Natalie, welcome to the show. Great to have you here, and um, let's talk about that. I mean, this is so important, and I think you and I just talking before the show the fact that we're coming out of three years with a lot of isolation, screen time is up not only for kids, but, but for us as well, right, Natalie? Yeah, and it's about time for us to have a little refresh, and why not during this lovely weather of spring? Agree, um, agree. The truth is, we are unpacking the pandemic, and we will be unpacking it for a while, and you and I talked about this off air, screens are here to stay. So yeah. how do we create that balance so that we can be um, the advocate for our child's mental and physical well-being and being it for ourselves as well? Yeah, and, and it's tough Nat to do sometimes. Right, Natalie, I was going to say too, you have this um, idea, you know, that, that we're not just parents. And I, and I love this quote that you use, and, and, and I'll let you share that quote with our viewers. Yeah, as a connected parenting coach, one of the things that we talked about with our clients, I, I tell this to parents all the time, you're not just a parent, you are a substitute frontal lobe. The frontal lobe isn't fully developed until around age 25, sometimes later. And the frontal lobe is the kind of like the CEO of your brain. So it's in charge of inhibit, inhibition control and impulse control and planning and prioritizing, critical thinking, all these wonderful things. And when it comes to screen time, which, by the way, is a very addictive extracurricular, um, it's hard for children to stop it because it's not really part of their schema just yet. So it's our job as the parent to help guide our children and define those times of, you know, when can you stop? How can we do that with the least amount of resistance? Because, by the way, you're going to get resistance no matter what age. Yeah, agreed. So let's talk about that. those guiding principles then. What sort of guiding principles do you recommend parents use when trying to uh, lower that screen time by making sure you're, I mean, what you like to do is really work together with the child, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's very much a co-creation, a collaborative effort. Everything I do with my clients is team-based. You're working as a family, um, no matter what your family looks like. Right. So uh, two things to consider when we're enrolling our kids on this new way of um, being with screens, so ideally less time with screens. One, thing to consider, one of the things to consider is your connection with your child, because the more connected you are with your child, the better cooperation you have from your child. And that takes some time, depending on the dynamic, depending on the age of the child. If you have teens, you know that they are really, some of them don't want to have anything to do with parents. So it's building that connection, which will in turn build that cooperation. The second thing to consider is the temperament of your child. Right. If you have a pretty easy going kid and you're like, okay, well, after the timer, you need you need to shut off the screen and have a brain break. Great if you have a kid like that, but if you don't, and most parents don't, most parents have a lot of strong-willed kids and it's really tough to kind of um, you collaborate on that, then you've got to use some other strategies. And one of the things that I love to share with parents is uh, must-dos before can-dos. So you've got to get a couple of must-dos done and those must do's can include physical activity, going outside and play. Right. I could include um, doing some family chores around the house, walking the dog, your homework. It can include whatever you co-create with your child. Again, depending on their age, you might be creating most of it. But if you have a teen, hey, listen, what can you do around the house to help us out? We're a team and I'm in, I'm here to help you with your mental well-being. That's my job. So we got to do this together. Natalie, before you even get to the point where you might, you know, as you just described, many parents are going through that situation where there's going to be conflict, you're going to be butting heads. Any strategies leading up to that so that maybe you're able to even avoid that in the first place? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. Um, so the first thing I would say is you need to do a lot of front loading. So what that looks like is not in the moment, right? Right before we take away the screen or before the timer goes off or whatever the situation is that you have, you need to talk about it beforehand when you're calm and connected. Hey, listen, bud, screen time isn't the greatest for your brain or your body. So we're gonna downtime, we're gonna down it a little bit and 
you know, how can we do this together in a calm, wonderful way? And your child may or may not uh, be on board, but they'll more likely be on board if you have the conversation beforehand. So that's the first thing is front loading that conversation. The second thing is as a parent, please know that you're going to get resistance. So don't be disappointed or upset when your child says, no, I don't want to, and or has a tantrum depending on their age. You're going to get that. That's part of their job is to test limits, and that is what they're going to do. And one of the biggest challenges for parents is to stay neutral and calm when you get that pushback from your kids. What about setting an example? As I said off the top, um, you know, we as parents, we're, we're using our screens too, right? And you know, when, mm-hmm. when you're, if you wonder why your child is, is on the screen all the time, is it fair to look at yourself? Oh, absolutely. That is such a great point because you, kids are always watching us. We are modeling and teaching just by them seeing us. So it's, can be a wonderful team effort again to all go outside and play. Or maybe I have some families who uh, have their phones be put away at a certain time at night. So like nine o'clock, nine thirty, they all all of them put it in a box and that's kind of how it goes and everyone gets some downtime away from screens. They do some reading or they play a fun game together. So if you approach it as a team, you have a better chance of cooperating because you're connecting with your kids. Natalie, if somebody needs that extra help and they need somebody like yourself, you know, to help with with advice and maybe bringing that family together, how do they get in touch with you? Yeah, absolutely. They can go on my website at www.evolvingwithnatalie.com and we can set up a call, a quick call to see how we can best support you and your family. Excellent. I uh, really appreciate this advice. And uh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to take it to heart myself because I probably use um, screen time myself more, more than I should. So again, thank you so much, Natalie. Really appreciate it. You can visit Natalie's website, as she said, to find out more information. We'll be right back. 